Hello again and welcome. This is a six month review of the Red Sea Max S500. It's my first review, six month review. I put the system together in March 2019. It's now the 1st of September 2019. So I'm going to look at the good, the bad and the ugly as it were. So let's look at the ugly first. We always want the negatives, don't we? Everybody seems to like negatives. Ugly. Hmm. There is absolutely nothing ugly about this system. And I'm not talking about looks, I'm talking about everything. There is something I would change, but that I dare say is something that Red Sea themselves um, are looking at in their upgrade program. And that would be to change the AC return pump and the recirculating pumps to DC to make them quieter because there is a hum and I have recorded in the conservatory where this unit sits it's not so much of a problem although it does in a way a little bit detract from the enjoyment of the tank because there is this constant hum all the time but it is what it is you get used to it and if you miss the hum then <laughs> there's something wrong I suppose but it would be nice to have DC return pump in particular so that we can put into a feeding mode rather than having to turn off as I do the three return pumps to reduce the flow in the tank but I've still got the return pump going full blast which does pick up some of the food away from uh, the corals when I'm trying to feed them. So that apart, that is the only thing I think I would change on this system if I had the opportunity. Quiet DC pumps. Controllable DC pumps at that. So what do I like for good? Pretty much everything about this system because I did research for probably 750 to 1000 hours before I decided to come back into um, the hobby. Uh, vast majority of that time of course via YouTube where people are showing their actual experiences and uh, the, the main uh, ones that I watched were when I found them Reef Girl as we know I've given Reef Girl a couple of shout outs and I think she's got a fantastic channel and I don't think there's a video on there that I haven't watched more than once. Uh, and in fact, when I first found her, I, I was watching her videos five and six times because there is just so much useful information. Mile High Reefer, Scott Anderson, um, Jeff Mad Hatters, and uh, is it Corey Fish of Hex? And of course, Billy Pipes. Those were the, the main ones that I came back to again and again. CJ's Aquarium was another one, although Unfortunately, having just put his system together, um, he then decided to call it a day for a while. But that was an incredibly interesting channel, how he put everything together, because that would have been my template had I not bought this Red Sea system. Um, so those are the channels that I particularly liked. And there were others I watched as well, of course. Many others. So everything I like about this, let's just have a look. Top down, this unit has got AI primes. Hydra um, 50 whatever they are HD primes they no longer come standard with the Red Sea Max they have their own Red Sea Max lighting now but I like them they're Wi-Fi controlled I have the the app and I have moonlight from 9 in the evening to 1 in the morning at the moment and the moonlight follows the phases of the moon um, above my hometown so great absolutely marvellous technology is a wonderful thing isn't it I used to, uh, at school when I was a little youngster, sit with a quill and ink, almost. A pen and ink, can you believe that? Dipping a blinking nib into ink, and uh, yeah, that's how I started life. And now look at this. The system is incredible. I liked, again, the back unit here, which is where the return pumps go, the top, pretty much the top half. So you don't get wiring and pumps themselves hanging on the back glass or inside the tank. It's all very, very neat and tidy behind this back glass. So there are three inlets on my system and then three pumps outlets plus the return pump coming out of there. I really did like that. That was something that caught my attention big time. 
I like things neat and tidy. I don't want to see hundreds of wires and thumping great big units that are getting algae and muck all over them, which is an eyesore. So from me, that point of view was, this is just so neat and so tidy. I also liked the idea underneath these return pumps, there is again, a large volume of RODI water. So that's also behind the tank. So the RODI water is just sitting there and it's the whole length of the tank virtually and then it goes into the auto top off on the bottom right hand corner which I've shown before in the sump. Very, very easy to fill up. I use at the moment in the summer here approximately between 11 and 15 litres a week of water topping up. I don't always put the um, condensation covers on the top. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It just depends on the heat. I'm not overly fussed about it until the winter to try and keep heat in in here. So roughly between 11 and 15 litres of um, condensation, if you like, a week, and I top up the RODI water. <laughs> Having said that, I've got to get hold of Vier on Monday, today's Sunday, the 1st of September, because I was going to put some uh, top up my RODI water. I have a 120 litre tank outside, and I was going to top that up because it was about half full, and the thing packed up on me. So, not even six months old. But there we go. Well, it is six months old. So I'll be calling Vier on Monday to see what's going on with that, what the guarantee is, and what I need to do. And it's a bit worrying, but at least I've always got um, a lot of RODI, so I've always got at least one water change and some spare. I'd never let it get right down to nothing, just in case the RODI unit does break, in which case. Could be a bit of a problem. So there we go, that's the RODI in the back for the auto top off. Lovely, neat and tidy, no extra lump of glass in the sump getting in the way. Because the sump as it is, is a nice size, very, very decent height, way above the water level, even in an emergency, if I had a power failure and there was back siphoning, absolutely no problem at all. Plenty of room in the sump for all of that which is used anyway, the back siphoning, when I do the water changes. So there we go. So that's proved itself many times. Very, very impressed with that side of things. I mean, I have to say, I have said before with Red Sea, um, when I say I'm impressed, people say, oh yeah, you're a Red Sea nut. Well, actually I had a Red Sea system before this and I almost vowed never to have one again because the reliability wasn't there. I had two little return pumps in the back section. It was an all-in-one unit one of those failed relatively about a week after the year warranty. And I could not clean that back filter system properly at all. Um, and I had glass and enemies in the system and I could not get them out because they're all in that back system. Very, very, very difficult to clean. Although a very enjoyable system to have at the end of the day, I loved it. Um, but then when I did get rid of it, I did not come back into the hobby for nearly 10 years. So I was not an officiado of Red Sea at the time. So again, when I decided to come back into this, looking at Red Sea, um, I investigated as much as I possibly could to make sure that I would be happy with this. So it looks like the, uh, the quality is very, very much there on this uh, system, and I hope on others as well, but I can't speak for the other systems because this is the one I have. So nice as well because the frame, something else I was looking for, is not wood, it's aluminium, and the Doors and sides are marine grade doors and uh, sides, whatever coating they put on it, it's marine grade, so great for salt water. Because again, looking at other people's tanks when they go into their sumps and they've got these wooden frames, oh dear, they look awful after a while, which is a shame again. Whereas that won't happen with this system. Something else that I looked for and uh, was very happy with and I did want to make sure that I had the full strength uh, on this system. The weight of the actual tank itself is phenomenal. Don't be uh, <laughs> lulled into thinking, well, it's not that big. It's only, what, 50 and a half inches long, 25, 26, whatever it is, uh, wide, or a bit more than that with the back section, say 30 wide and 25 and a half high. It can't be that heavy. Two strong guys can lift that. Yes, they can. But my word, you, you're risking your back big time because it's not just five pieces of glass. There's the back glass, and then in front of the back glass is another piece of back glass because you've got this section at the back. So there's another massive piece of half-inch glass in there. That's heavy. And then all the other bits and pieces to make sure that the 
um, the water to come out and you've got a section at the far end for your return and inlets etc. There is a lot of glass in this system, it's half inch thick and it is heavy. So if you are thinking about putting one together yourself, make sure you've got at least two others, preferably three, when the, the moving of the actual tank um, is required. It really is an absolute beast. Something else I liked as well, moving up to the top again, or staying at the top effectively, was or is these, the lighting system and the runners that are on the sides so that you can move the lighting backwards and forwards. It's also a great idea for maintenance. You can move things out of the way, which is wonderful. And also, if you want to get a little bit of extra light nearer the front or nearer the back, then you can just move it for 24 hours or whatever you like. It's just so versatile. It really is. Lovely system. The top front panel with Red Sea written on it, I have noticed along the top that the paint or whatever it is they are using, I thought it was the actual plastic itself was that colour, but it's not. There is a, a paint or a surface on it that is now rubbing off and it's only six months old. Whether or not I talk to Red Sea about it, I don't know, but it is rubbing off. And of course, you have to wipe these things on a daily basis. So just wiping it like that, it's pulling off. Um, it is pulling off the paint, which is a shame. That is, I suppose, an ugly. If there is an ugly, that is it. Not that many people will be able to see it. I'm six feet five inches tall nearly, so I can see everything. There's nothing that I cannot see on this tank. I don't have to um, get a step ladder or anything like that. So I do see everything. Maybe quite a few people wouldn't notice. Moving down to the sump and the chiller compartment to the left. As you know, I do have a chiller in this. If I had changed or do anything differently, I would put the chiller in day one. Uh, it took me a little while for when we get our first heat wave in the UK. Don't get them very often, or we never used to, but we seem to get them quite often now. And the triple two speed fan I had was not, just not man enough. Although it helped a little bit, it could not keep the temperature down enough. So I needed to get the chiller in. And luckily for me, I got the chiller in and got it up and running a day before we had another massive heat wave here. And that I think did save a lot of my, my inhabitants. So I would get a chiller and I would get it straight away. The other thing is when putting everything together, the I have given a little bit of feedback to Red Sea, whether or not they take it up or not, I don't know. But you can, as I've already said, put the side panels on upside down if, if you don't realize. And it's easy to do. But it's not quite so easy to take them off again because they have catches that you have to turn with a screwdriver to lock them in place, which is fine. But they're also aluminium, which is a very soft metal. So when you come to undo them and then try and do them up again, you can end up damaging them. And I did actually damage one of mine. So pay quadruple attention to make sure that the side panels are the correct way up. I did put um, a couple of sets of LEDs along the, uh, the top of the, the sump and I'm very, very glad I did because that helps enormously. Even though I do have a Kessel Grow Light in there, it doesn't give me as much light as I need over in the corners. So by putting that in the system, I'm, I'm happy. And that's one thing again, perhaps Red Sea might consider looking at for an upgrade is to actually put lighting in the sump because nobody seems to do this and yet as reefers we spend an awful lot of time in that sump not physically in it of course but our hands are but we spend a lot of time cleaning things the filters and everything else that goes with it they're all in the sump and we've got to get around in there we do need lighting and I'm sure that Red Sea with the abilities that they have could come up with a, a really good lighting system for um, that sump and that would be a major plus as you open the door the lights come on of course I haven't got that I think Reef and Recan um, did that or well, one of the uh, other ones that I, I did look at did do that with a switch so as he opens the door the lights come on I'm, I'm just not that good so I just put the things in and I turn them on with a switch at the back that I, I put them on the back filter socks in the sump the layout of the sump I think is fantastic it's, you can hear the water coming into the filter socks because they're running down like a sluice gate effectively, so it's not silent, which is absolutely fine because if you can't hear them, it means something's blocked, which is a good sign for me. Um, I have got wadding in them. I have put on one of my vlogs where I get the, the wadding from. It's a UK company. 
it's furniture wadding, you put in cushions and things. I don't even wash the stuff out, I put it straight in and the, uh, <laughs> the Red Sea skimmer goes nuts for about five minutes as it's cleaning all the, the rubbish out from um, the wadding itself, whatever it is. And that's it, there aren't any chemicals or anything else in this wadding that harms any of the inhabitants at all. Very impressed with that because um, I do like, as with others, to put extra filtration into the filter socks. They're nylon filter socks as well, so they're quite robust and they get cleaned out every other day and uh, sometimes they are blocked even in that time. Sometimes they're not, it's just the way the system is. I have noticed as well that the system seems to have its own cycle, which I found interesting. You put everything together, you turn the, um, uh, the Red Sea um, skimmer on, get it all lined up so it's the right height, get it all running and everything else, and then you think, yeah, that's it. Well, no, it's not. I've noticed several times, hang on a minute, those bubbles are very low. Do I need to adjust it? So to start with, yes, I did. Came down in the following morning and the thing had overflowed. Dreadful, mess everywhere. So be aware that the, the system itself has its own cycle, just the way it is. I, I, I just find that totally interesting. So sometimes I look at it and the bubbles aren't at the, the right height. They're a little bit low. Where the red neck on the Red Sea skimmer is is where the bubble should be, just at the top of that. And sometimes the bubbles are just at the bottom of the collar. You think, well, that's not doing anything. And at other times, the bubbles are near the top. So it has its own filter. But once you've got it sorted, or its own cycle, once you've got it sorted, just leave it. I clean the, um, the skimmer cup out once a week, I take it off and give it a thoroughly good clean and a hose. But every day I use the, the tube with a little Mickey Mouse um, valve on the end and I do um, get rid of any skim ache that's in the system regardless whether I can see it or not, I always do it and there's always just a little bit in there. Sometimes there's a little bit more but hardly anything at the end of the day now the the tank is beginning to mature but every single day I will get rid of what's in there just to try and keep any smells down because my goodness me that does smell and if you've got a sensitive nose or your partner's got a sensitive nose and you don't clean that out you'll be in trouble <laughs> I put a lot of Ciparax um, into the system uh, I took one of Reef Girl's ideas and daisy chained them together and I'm very glad I did because they're very easy to manoeuvre about should I ever need to. I have got copy pods in there now. I enjoy watching them of an evening. I try and count them see, <laughs> to see whether or not they're growing in there, but they are because whenever I clean out the filter socks now, this morning, for instance, I had a record when I'm taking the filter out. Um, there were 13 copy pods around the outside of the filter socks, which is in the sump, of course, and inside and also under the front where I have the three packets of um, carbon I have a little bit of filter pad uh, under there, filter wadding under there and there's usually four or five copy pods in there so I know that I have got copy pods in the system and having them inside the filter socks shows that they are in the actual main display tank as well although to be fair I do get a magnifying glass around 8.30 of the night time and I can see them playing around on the sand which is nice, only the small ones. Uh, of course I just want to see the big ones all the time because they're the ones that are going to be making more babies. I've got one heater in the sump itself, another heater in the recyclation, recirculation pump chamber. So there are two elements there to be able to heat the water should it need to be heated and heat it relatively uh, quickly to maintain the temperature. I've got the chiller set now to 27, so if the temperature gets to 27, it'll actually be 27.2 according to um, the temperature checker I have, the check, the HANA check temp one, which is absolutely accurate uh, by their own um, paperwork that they sent it is absolutely accurate they say it's accurate to one tenth but it is absolutely accurate so 27 as soon as that hits 27 on the display which is actually 27.2 the chiller kicks in and brings it down to 25.9 which is 26.1 happy with that the fish seem happy with it the coral seem happy with it I'm happy with it 
So everything I like um, on there. I've got the UV filter, a D&D, it's a, a 20 watt, it's fairly long, and although the paperwork says to have it vertical to get rid of any air bubbles, I have to have it at an angle, and I did talk to the guy at the, the fish shop that sold me it, and he said, no, that's absolutely fine. Uh, it won't invalidate any of the warranty, etc., etc. Because with bubble scrubbing as well, I do get bubbles in there, and they do sit at the top, but again, they come out so easily, it's no issue at all. Um, the only thing with it is I've had to have one of the mounts on the actual black cladding that they have inside the sump and one on the glass itself because the, the sump is so high and I cannot get the mount on the glass to stick at all. So if you've seen one of my vlogs recently showing the, uh, the sump, you can see a thumping great big elastic band holding the UV filter to make sure it doesn't just fall off so that's that's a bit Heath Robinson but that's the way it is for me I'm afraid in there but otherwise everything I like we've got the drawer with all of the um, electrical connections in which keeps everything there relatively neat and tidy that you can't see any uh, mishmash of wires although it is a bit mishmashy at the back because I've got all of the um, power supplies and so on and so forth out the back but of the tank that is on the on the shelf behind it but can't be seen it's all from the point of view of the front neat and tidy and i can switch each unit on and off um, as i wish so again when cleaning out the filter socks turn off the the skimmer and everything's nice and easy turn the skimmer off and then turn off the return pumps uh, and the recyclation pumps recirculation pumps when i'm doing a water change all very very easy very easy indeed it is just easy to do nice simple I say a simple system but obviously a heck of a lot of thought has gone into this I have on the left side of the the sump itself a refugium section I'm not putting anything else in there it is purely for a refugium which is what I wanted in the first place and I did put a piece of egg crate in there just to raise the height of um, the refugium for anything coming through so if the chatomorpha for instance does decide to grow it gets very very dark but it doesn't actually get much bigger in there so i may need to get some more chatomorpha in there to uh, try and keep any of this algae down in the tank itself then i didn't want that floating out into the skimmer section and possibly clogging the skimmer and then floating out also over the um, the three bags of carbon as well so I just put a bit of egg crate in there to hold all that back and that's done a marvellous job there so I'm very happy with that too. So all in all the system itself very very good I can't think of anything bad as it were the only thing as I say I would change is the return pump and recyclation recirculation pumps to make them DC and more controllable would be the only thing that I personally would want to change and I dare say at some time in the future some lucky Red Sea reefer purchaser is going to get exactly that. So that's my review of the first six months. Would I do anything differently? To be absolutely honest, no. Um, whenever I do anything, I do it for a reason. Um, I can't think that I sort of just go willy-nilly and say, oh, crikey, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, crikey, I shouldn't have done that. That was a bit daft, whatever, whatever. Um, I like the aquascape I've got, although if I were to change it, I think I would have possibly just slightly I would have got more flatter rocks like I've got Wembley Stadium on the left as I call it which is a great big flat rock I probably would have got two or three or maybe even four other flat rocks as well um, put them near the base to make the base if you like wider so I could have had more of the, the bottom but again I've got corals in there and intend over time potentially to get others that don't need a massive amount of light because there are overhangs on the aquascape but again, because of the, the lighting, where I can slide the lighting backwards and forwards, if I need more light at the front to try and get over the overhangs to a certain extent, then I can. I have all those options. So, you know, thumbs up to Red Sea for that system. Absolutely thumbs up. So that's my review of the first six months. I'm still incredibly um, happy with everything. The, the quality of everything that Red Sea do is really top-notch and I'm very 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 happy overall if you have stayed with me this far thank you don't forget to like and subscribe if you didn't like the video vent your frustrations hit that don't like button twice bop bop
Thank you. See you on the next one.